All right, let's put this down, push that back, and open this baby up. I'm hoping it's not any nude Playboy cards or something or I'm gonna get in trouble here. got here uh we have lady death lady death i've talked about it before close close but not quite uh nudity here uh yep there you go right on the back here so it's a card set and i just have to hope that the card set is complete oh we've got vampirella here as well i've talked about her before so you can see here um you know comic characters have crossover appeal into lots of different areas one of which is trading cards so yeah there's um there's a lot of cool cards here and you can see not only is she represented in cartoon form uh drawing form you know in an art form but also they get models to play some of these characters and um, you know, take poses like here. You can see the back of the. I gotta watch my hands. I'm getting in trouble. The back of the cards here can be made out to uh, look like a full-bodied figure there. So that's pretty neat. How the person had that right there in the binder. So really neat. Uh, let's see. I'll just skip through. And who doesn't like Vampirella dressed as Santa? Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Let me just keep moving through here. So lots of umbrella cards, you know, on the back, we've got the numbers. So that will help me tell, you know, if we've got complete sets to these things here. Is this something different? I think we moved into a different area. Oh yeah, this is the character She. I've talked about her before, S-H-I. So go through uh, these. I actually have an old sealed calendar of She in my eBay store right now. Billy Tucci is the artist who drew her. Uh, you could see some more full panels here as well. Uh, there's some there done by the uh, backs of the card. So I think that's really cool uh, how they do that. So yeah, a bunch more of these here. And uh, again, hoping that we have a complete uh, set here. Uh, then we've got some Spider-Man uh, cards as well. And um, let's see, looks like there's some other characters. We've got Venom. Uh, let's see, we've got some Spider-Man enemies. Uh, this is actually my favorite Spider-Man enemy right here, Tombstone. I absolutely love him. Uh, if you're trying to figure out what series this comes from, what you would do is uh, just pull out one of the cards and look on the back, and that will give you the information that you're looking for. So it's 1994 and Fleer, that's what you'd want to look up. Uh, love that cheetah outfit, Calypso. All right, let me just flip through the rest of these. These look to be in excellent condition. Again, just gotta hope that we have a complete set here because that will make these much easier to sell. Uh, usually these uh, card sets have a checklist uh, that allow you to, here we go, like this is a perfect example right here. So this would tell you how many cards are in the set. Let me pull that out. Okay, so here's the front of the checklist, and for this particular checklist, it's breaking the cards down into different groups, like Spider-Man's enemies and Spider-Man's friends and that sort of thing. Uh, then we go on the back, and we could see how many total cards there are in the set. Now, you could see here that we have some special cards. Now, those are considered separate from the base set. You could see the base set has 150 cards. So that's how you would sell that. If you ever came across it, you'd sell it as the complete base set. But then there's these extra ones that would make it truly a complete set if you had all of these. There's these uh, plastic cards and these hologram cards here as well. Now I could show you an example of a hologram card, although this one looks like it's from the 1995 set. But these look like shinier cards, as you could see here. They kind of glisten. Uh, a bit and so uh, those in and of themselves can sometimes be worth uh, you know some good money sometimes just the individual card uh, you know could be a double digit sale for you and you know sometimes for example if you just had 
you know, all four of the holograms or sometimes there's five holograms or more. You could just sell those to somebody and sometimes those will sell for like $50 depending on what the set is because someone who has the base set is trying to complement that and get a complete set. Uh, so a lot of times it's just the base set plus the holograms, but here we've got these additional limited edition plastic cards too. So just a little tutorial on trading cards. All right, any guesses what's inside that Adidas box? I could tell you for sure that it's not Adidas sneakers. Let's go take a look. All right, here we go. Hoping for gold, hoping for gold. No, obviously I know there's not gold in there. That I would know. Ziploc bag could mean toys. Uh, I see cards. I see cards, it's Pokemon cards. And look at here, another one of these tins just got kind of stuffed in here. You know, and this is really a shame because, you know, I just had no idea this was back here. So here's just a bunch of cards that they just need to be sorted. They need to be organized. I mean, look at this. This is, you know, there's, you know, there's nothing I could do with this all disorganized like this. So, um, looks like there's some instructions for some games or something. Maybe I don't know, but uh, I've just got to take these all out and and get them sorted and you know try to find ones that are you know, valuable and lot the other ones like we've talked about. All right, here we go. The mystery box I have been waiting to look in. And I'm also waiting to look into these two as well, but that's going to be in the uh, in the next episode. So let's take a look. I haven't looked in here in years, so let's see what's there. All right, so I'm just going to pull this out a little bit here. And now this is just a top layering item. So this would be something I just kind of slid on top of the box recently. And I have a lot of these drawing books. I've mentioned these in my YouTube videos to pick these up when you see them. Uh, they're not going to be items that sell for a lot individually, but um, if you get these in lots, you could do really well with them. And so uh, that's what I tend to do uh, when I find these. I get them a lot at estate sales. I see them in flea markets, and I also see them in community uh, garage sale events as well. So uh, we've got a cool Star Wars item in here. We've got... Uh, Star Wars Galactic Map. So this is a big oversized book. And, you know, inside, uh, look at this. You know, if you're a kid, you would absolutely love this. I mean, you could just be, like, I love things with maps on them when I was a kid. I, I still love them, actually. I'm just a big kid. But uh, I would love stuff like this. I would just sit there and just stare at all these different scenes and read all the different uh, descriptive items and stuff here so it's really something you could throw your imagination into uh, if you're if you're a kid and even as an adult I love that kind of thing uh, what do we got here it says Sears on the outside of it let's take a look in here ah lathe operation books these sell very well if you find anything lathe related, in fact, I'm looking right up here. I remember exactly where it was that I got this. And um, you have to absolutely pick these up if you see them. They might look really boring and stuff, but uh, there's a lot of lathe workers out there who love these old machine shop books. Any machine shop books, but particularly lathe books, I do very well. And if it has craftsmen on the outside of it, you know, now you've blended something that's popular uh, with a lot of people in terms of machine workers and a great brand craftsman do really well you can combine them or sell them separately uh, here we've got a service part catalog i've talked about this before but always look for service part catalogs people love to look at the old parts they love to look at the diagrams uh, people eat this stuff up a lot of people leave this kind of thing behind uh, because, let's expand out the view for a, a little bit there, uh, because it just looks boring, right? I mean, you see this, it's just an easy kind of item to pass up, but, you know, there you go. Inside, it's filled with things people would like. Uh, inside here, uh, we're going to see more of these uh, painting books and art books that I was telling you about, Adventures in Acrylics and Oils. Here we've got one on how to draw and paint landscapes. Um, and they've got really cool covers. Like I love the, 
the vintage looks on them. Now this one here is an old Saturday Evening Post from the 1940s. So there we've got a magazine. Uh, we've got another uh, Saturday Evening Post here as well. You could sell these individually or in lots. It depends what's on the cover and it depends how old it is. So it does uh, pay to just research these individually, just check out what it is you have. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of them. So uh, here, Boy's Life, uh, this was a popular magazine back in the day. We've got the kid here playing with the plane. Uh, dates back to the 1940s, really cool uh, piece right there. Uh, then we've got another one of these drawing books. So I'm just gonna combine all the drawing books together once I'm done with this box, and we still got a ways to go with this box because it is big. Oh my gosh, this next picture. This is so cool. I absolutely love this. I love the fashion from, from back then, you know, from the 1940s. Really cool. Carol Landis. What a hat. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is really cool. You know, it's something, you know, you only see these days pretty much if you go to like a fancy derby or something. And I just absolutely love the articles inside. I mean, people love to pick this stuff up and look at it because it really gives them a great, uh, you know, throwback in time. So, you know, again, I always say this, but if there's any item you see here that you like, just let me know. Uh, a lot of this stuff I'm trying to make a priority to list, but you know, some of it's just gonna sit behind unless someone tells me that they're interested in it. Another oversized Star Wars book. This is from uh, episode one. And you know, this is why I like to buy things and you know, just accumulate them from time to time is because you know, I can add value. I don't have to sell the the first oversized Star, Star Wars book at first. And you know, along the way I pick up this one and you know, now I could sell both of them together in a little lot if I want to. Uh, this here looks really cool. Look at this. This is an old Swiss Family Robinson coloring book. That is really neat. I mean, look at that. That is nice and old, uh, not even colored. Uh, so there's a lot of people, by the way, believe it or not, they collect these old school coloring books. This one, uh, let's see if we could get a date on this in terms of how far back that it goes. I can't tell initially right here. Maybe I could do a little more. Oh, you know, here we go. 1946, it looks like. Wow, that's cool. That's amazing. You know, the binding is still intact there. Really neat. Some Disney fans might like this too because they've got the Swiss Family Robinson uh, treehouse over there uh, as well. I always like to go up that when I go over there. Uh, this is um, something on Sea Power. And I'm not even sure why I picked this up. Is this a, oh yeah, this is one of these art books. Okay, so it's another one on uh, painting different scenes related to the sea, to the ocean. Kind of reminds me of Bob Ross a little bit. He used to do a great job with the waves and crashing off the rocks and everything. Uh, painting the Four Seasons, awesome one there. So there's a lot of potential with this uh, in terms of what to do. We've got seascapes and landscapes. I'll just go through these a little bit faster here. Coast to coast, so painting in oils. We've got painting water and weather. So that one is cool. And we've got oil painting as well. So that's neat. Boy, there's a bunch of stuff here. Look at this. Another oil painting one. So you could do even something like, you know, do an oil painting lot, for example. Um, paints and landscapes. You could do a landscape lot. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, look at this. Wow. And in the middle of all that stuff, we've got a church art calendar. And this is really neat. Look at that. Look at that scene. That is just so cool. You just will, you will not see a scene like that today. It's just amazing how the artist changed. This is from the 1970s, so 1978. Uh, looks like this comes from uh, New York area. So really neat. And it looks like we've got, I think we've got a complete calendar here. We've got, so anyone from 19, born 1978 might like something like this. And look at that. So each one of these has a really cool religious scene in them. So I love it. That is a neat piece there. Um, I think we might have some duplicates here, at least one, because we've got the Red Barnes one. Uh, again, uh, we've got how to draw trees is in here. We've got landscapes you can paint, perspective drawing, 
uh, how to draw and paint children. So that's a neat one too, old school. So you want to paint snow scenes. So I've got that, we've got another one of these red barn ones. And now we've got some things that are not art books. So we've got a puzzle. Oh, we've got several puzzles actually. Let's see what we've got here. What is in, let me open this bag. All right, and look at this. This is really cool. We've got Snuffy Smith here, a famous comic strip character. Uh, Blondie, they used to love to read Blondie and Dagwood back in the day. So that's neat. And I love how these are complete puzzles. These puzzles are uh, pretty old as well. Uh, I don't see an exact date on them, but I would say these probably date back to the uh, 70s or 80s. Uh, we've got Beetle Bailey. I absolutely love Beetle Bailey. I read Beetle Bailey all the time with Sarge. And here we've got Archie and Jughead and Betty and Veronica. So really cool, awesome. Those are all for them. I could sell them individually or I could sell them as a set. So we'll have to see what we want to do with that. Uh, Flight Engineer's Manual, it's a supplement. Uh, Pan American uh, Navigation Service, so it's an early Pan Am item. So there's a lot of people out there that collect plane related items. So, uh, and specific airlines they go after. So Pan Am, Eastern, that sort of thing. Here we've got what look to be some stencils. So people who are into art would like this, all different uh, sorts of uh, designs here. Let's see if we get a company name. Unique is the name of the company, but they're all different types of, um, you know, stencil, you know, kind of templates. Like here you can see different kind of animals and stuff. And so just depends on, you know, which item you pick out here. It looks like there's a bunch of animals for the most part what these are. So, okay, just keep that over there for now. Uh, looks like we've got some more plane related stuff here. Aviation. Uh, so this is cool because I said a lot of people collect aviation stuff. Well, look at this. This dates back to the 1920s. So we've got uh, three magazines here that date back to, I think this one does too. Yeah, that date back to 1927. So that'll be a nice little lot for somebody there. Uh, and we've got a mystery item in here. What do we got over here? Uh, oh, I remember where this stuff comes from. Oh my God, this comes from one of the earliest estate sales that I went to, and it's just been sitting in this box forever. There's these old altitude charts that come from the 1960s that the air pilots used to help them get around. Uh, and so, you know, people would be interested in that. Look at this, old daily weather maps from the 1960s. This is so cool. Uh, people would use this back in the day to um, you know, figure out how to navigate wherever that wherever they were, and then there's, you know, like just these, um, you know, I think the best way to kind of describe it is just old, uh, you know, paperwork related to you know operating different kinds of uh, planes, and so some of the stuff is just typed out. Here's an old instruction manual just kind of thrown in here. That's why I always love looking through paper stuff because you never know what you're going to find in there. And you might find some little piece of paper that someone winds up spending a lot of money on because they need that instruction manual, for example. So that's just kind of tossed in there. So uh, we'll put that to the side and there's some more, um, looks like there's some more air related stuff uh, over there. So we'll just put that over here. Yeah, check this out. I was looking through that black binder down there, just taking stuff out of it. And this is the type of ephemera I just love. And I always get great value out of something like this. It's just something that was not meant to be kept for a long time. You could see it's here from 1950. They literally drew pictures of the planes for the cover. It's from uh, Shepard Air Force Base in Texas. And it's a technical training uh, document. You know, and this was just meant to be given out to people. You could see, you know, scribbling on the back of it, which actually I would say you could argue adds a little bit of value to it because, you know, this just goes to show someone actually using it back in the day in terms of, you know, scribbling on it while they were learning and stuff like that. And it's got all sorts of cool diagrams and everything's kind of typed out in there. Um, just trust me, I'm telling you, based on experience, um, this kind of stuff, you could even auction it and probably do well on it so you know we'll see i'll i'll figure it out but i'll probably get this one up soon looks like we've got some more 
plane related pieces in here. So airline transport pilot written examination guy. Now that might not be something that's worth much, but we've got some radio trans uh, radio uh, and instrument flying. So there's a lot of people who are into radio types of uh, items. And so you combine that with flying, you could have something good. Okay, looks like here we've got a stack of airworthiness uh, directives. So these are directives that literally came from the FAA uh, telling uh, pilots uh, different um, rules and regulations and <clears throat> things that they needed to do and things they needed to know uh, to operate their uh, planes. And so uh, there's a whole big stack of this here and probably, oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I was going to say 1960s, so it dates back to the 1950s. So this would be a long tail type of item, but there might be someone interested in something like that who's into plane stuff. Uh, then we've got some old maps here. So old maps could do very well depending on the city. And also, you want to look at uh, what company might have sponsored the map. So, you know, Gulf is a great uh, company as well. Here we've got one by Standard Oil. You know, uh, there's collectors, for example, who just love Standard Oil stuff. And if they live in Illinois, they might want an item like that. You know, here's an old Jersey map of Texaco for all the Jersey folks watching this. Jersey in the house. Uh, Eastern uh, United States. We've got Sunoco here. And we've got another FAA regulations thing. So let's see what else here. We've got, looks like a bunch of uh, plain magazines. Some more stencils, so I have to combine that. Let me just take the rest of this stuff out and lay it out. All right, here they are. Nothing super spectacular, but uh, for those of you who watch my channel for a while, you know I have a big stack of vintage airplane magazines in the shed, so that's where these are gonna go. Get them out of that box, combine all those there, sell them off as a big lot. Uh, this one could probably solve individually how to build radio control models. This one just cracked me up because it reminds me of uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Pepper Potts. Uh, doesn't that look like her? And she's holding a Playboy magazine of all things. So that's pretty interesting. So anyway, uh, maybe I'll hold on to that one. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, so uh, uh, that's what we've got here. I'm going to get rid of that box and going to empty this shelf just put this stuff somewhere else, organize it. So I'm gonna get rid of that box and I'm gonna just relocate this stuff right now, get Pink Panther out of there and call it a day. Daisy, what's in that box? What's in that? I know, isn't that exciting? We got something from Andrew and Marissa from the a and Hunters YouTube channel. Uh, they sent this over uh, after I put them up for Support That Seller Sunday. So it looks like we've got a special mystery box to look through. So I'm excited. I showed the card that they made us uh, the other day, and so that was really nice. So I can't imagine what's in there. Let's open it up. All right, so the good thing with these package opening uh, video segments is that I really only have one shot at it, one take. So if I mess up, if I say something wrong, I can't redo it, which is good for me because it saves me time. Because uh, there's really only one time you could uh, open up uh, a box uh, initially to get that realistic reaction of what's in there. Now, I don't want to show uh, any addresses here, so that's why I'm pointing it away, but that's really cool. I love the PT on the side, so I just got to be careful how I position this. All right, so what could be in here? What am I thinking? I don't know. My initial thought is maybe something Doctor Who related, but what's the chances they would have something like that there? So I don't know, but they, they did know to incorporate that into the card. Hmm, what is this? Oh, I was right. Look at this. There is something Doctor Who. What is the chances of this? Now, for those of you who don't know, Doctor Who is my favorite uh, television show. It's the longest running science fiction show of all time, started in 1963. And it tells the story, it's made by the BBC. Um, they still make it, by the way. And it basically tells the story of a time traveler named the Doctor who uh, goes all throughout the universe and he could travel forwards and backwards in time and he travels in this spaceship um, that's bigger on the inside than the outside um, and so I've always loved it uh, I still watch it and I have all the episodes from the classic series on VHS and DVD now it says this is a limited um, edition it's number 16 out of 750 Wow handcrafted and hand-painted uh, pottery so this is really cool. It's a certain character. I wonder what character 
It is. Now, of course, there's the doctor. The doctor can regenerate, uh, which is why the series has been able to stay on so long. So whenever he, he dies or whenever really the actor wants to move on, he could just um, regenerate into a different form. Now, by the way, awesome um, packing here. Look at this. We've got um, nice packing here. Whatever's in there, nice and solid. And then there's another piece over here. I can't believe I guessed Doctor Who and it really was Doctor Who. My goodness. And then all this, look at all this. So if you order from uh, A&M Hunters, you're going to get your stuff packed uh, really good here. So A&M stands for uh, Andrew and uh, Marissa. So it's not Texas A&M in case anyone was wondering. So, okay, I guess I'll open this smaller one first, which may not completely tell me what it is if this is some kind of base. So we might have to wait until we open up that bigger piece there. Um, oh, we've got a hat. Now, this looks like the hat to Peter Davidson. He's the fifth doctor. For those of you who don't know, um, he was also uh, an important character on the TV show, All Creatures uh, Great and Small. So uh, let's see here. Let's open up this one. Let's see. This should be Peter Davidson's face, the fifth doctor, who's one of my favorite doctors. I, I really love the first five doctors. Uh, after that, it gets a little sketchy, <laughs> but... Uh, the first five are definitely awesome. So open this up, see what is in here. Boy, oh boy, you know, it, they did a really great job wrapping this because, you know, this is the type of stuff that could really get damaged easily. And uh, so far, looks great, looks great. I don't feel anything like broken or shaken in here. So let us see what it is. Keep going, keep going. Watch, I drop it and it shatters all over the floor. <laughs> that would not be good. All right, I really do have to be careful because I am clumsy. And yes, I was right, it is Peter Davidson. See how much of a fan I am? I knew it was Peter Davidson just from the hat. So there he is. And uh, he's famous for having this uh, celery stalk uh, on him. So he always hated it. and. Uh, he didn't really understand why they had the celery stalk on him. And it's actually explained in his regeneration uh, episode. Uh, so it helps detect a certain type of uh, poison. So um, if you are interested, really cool, really cool. Look at this. Doctor Who Series 5. This is number 16. I've never even seen these before. Wow. And look, this is made in England. This is amazing. Wow. Wow. Now, let me make sure I get, the, yeah, there we go. Look at that. So you could put all sorts of stuff in here. I mean, you know, looks like it's made to, you know, pour stuff out of and stuff, but you know, you could do all sorts of things with this. This is going to take a uh, prime place in my display area. So I cannot wait to put this up and, and show this off. Uh, I'll have to determine exactly where that's gonna be, but wow, this takes a big place of honor in my home. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew and Marissa and Baby Hunter, by the way. I'll again put a link to their YouTube channel down below and also to their eBay store, by the way. So you can go check them out in both places. A very, very nice gift. I'm super thankful and um, I couldn't be happier. Doctor Who stuff, I mean, big primetime thumbs up. Thank you so much. As you can see, I am very happy to have two shelves done. We've got three shelves to go. I know that in these two boxes, there's some really cool collectibles treasures. So uh, we'll do a mystery unboxing of those as well because I don't really know uh, what's in there, except I know I have some Pokemon items and uh, that one over there, some other figures. But beyond that, it's really a crapshoot. Stuff's just been buried in there for years. So we'll take that out in a future video. Um, my contractor sent me a text message tonight at about nine o'clock and said, hey, uh, we're gonna come by tomorrow morning, uh, nine o'clock and do the project. And I said, um, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so we're gonna have to push that off until next week because there's just no way. I've got way too much stuff I gotta get out of here. So like I said, it's a priority now. We're gonna focus on that. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I know this was a little long, so thanks if you stuck through it, but this is what I got to do, and I'm just documenting the journey, everyone, so um, I appreciate it. I'll see you back at the next one. Uh, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you put a comment or question down below. If there's something that you saw that you like, let me know that too, 
and uh, make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. So uh, I'll see you later. See you at the next one, everyone. Take care.